thanks for joining us uh, tonight. If you're here in North America, uh, or if you're up in in uh, the UK, uh, thanks for for joining us. And you know, I really think that that it's so important that we find out how to 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 build our business properly and. And uh, one of the most important things is, is really being able to tell your story properly. And it's not just, it's not just going out there and, and sharing a bunch of information with people. It's about having, having it down in a way that it makes sense that, that people will want to get engaged with what you're doing. They'll, they'll feel like they're, like they're being uh, pulled into the story in a way that it, that it really uh, makes sense. So to, to start the, the call off tonight, uh, my friend, our business partner uh, down in, in Australia, Katie Larkin, is going to play a couple of videos um, from, from Eric Worre's training. And I think, I think this would kind of give us an idea. And then, and then what we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to talk a little bit about the whole process of, of story sharing, storytelling, and, and uh, maybe some of the mistakes that people make. And then we'll hear, we'll hear a couple of stories uh, tonight on the call. So, Katie, I'm going to hand it over to you. Okay, great. Uh, if anyone has any uh, challenge seeing that, can everyone see the video? Can you see the video? Just somebody let me know. Oh, actually, I'm just checking. You got it, Katie. So. Okay, great. Thank you. Let me ask you this. Everybody talks about, has their own version of what fundamentals are. In your bird, in your view, what is what is fundamentals? I mean, what are the basics that well, people just have to get solid on, no matter what company they're involved? In? It's never changed in the 33 years that I've been with the business. The fundamentals are getting in front of people. You have got to get in front of people to share this product and business, and how you do that uh, through the internet, one-on-one -on -one groups. Uh, it doesn't matter. You've got to tell the story. So fundamentally is learning, uh, be becoming passionate and have a strong belief about your product, your business, your profession, especially your profession. Uh, and that's why I love the fact that all of us as leaders in the profession have united. I think technology has helped us unite. Uh, you know, we used to circle the wagons and shoot each other. Yeah, I know, and I know. Now we're all supporting each other because we we love this profession and we want to protect that profession. Um, so your belief, and, and, and we're going to talk about women more later, but um, especially for women, believing in yourself. You know, you've got to believe in yourself. You've got to be confident to go out there. You know, most people are so used to trading hours for dollars that they don't understand this whole concept of I've got to build it, you know, I've got to build a foundation before these rock star checks happen. And we live in such an impatient world, you know, uh, so people have to manage their expectations. But um, fundamentals to me is when I see someone getting out of momentum or um, starting to go into that downward spiral with their attitude, generally I, I ask them about their calendar. Tell me what's happening. And they will give me every excuse in the world and when, I, when as soon as you ha start hearing blaming, justifying, and excuses, you know that they're not in activity. So activity is is king. Um, but doing the right activity too right. is is important. So. so really, it's just what we keep talking about is talk to people, talk to people, talk to people. Right? Uh, the fundamentals you got to you got to keep talking to people. If somebody's falling out of momentum, pull out their calendar. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about whatever fear they've got. That, that's it's usually keep, yeah, that's keeping them in avoidance behavior, so they're not talking to people, or they think they have whatever limiting belief that they have. You know, they don't know anybody. Nobody will listen to me. You know, I don't have the time. You don't understand. I have kids. I have this. Right. Um, you know, my job is a lot of pressure. Uh, all the things that everybody in the world has to deal with every single day. Um, talk about momentum. You, you mentioned yeah. momentum in that in that. Uh, you know, when somebody's falling out of momentum, talk about all the different aspects of momentum because I, I love the topic of momentum and I think it's an important aspect of what we do. Momentum is huge and, you know, the, I really believe in building long-term sustainable businesses. Obviously, we want to build the business that lasts and that you can actually have residual 
walk away income. I mean, I really believe in building leaders um, and and creating independent people versus codependent people. Um, so that helps build the sustainability, and then momentum comes in in waves. And you're and and the longer I've been in this profession, the more I am understanding that because I think people get really down on themselves when they start comparing themselves to maybe a new group that's just on fire, and they go, "Well, what's wrong with me?" And and but what happens? Your momentum goes in in in, in waves. Your first initial momentum is the most important. So that ignorance on fire, get out there and create it. That is really, really important. And then what's going to happen is, is you're, you're, you'll go through times where maybe it's not as intense, but then you have to recreate that momentum. And, you, it, and what I've discovered is that it's, it's an absolute choice. You, you just have to decide, we're going in momentum. And you just fire everyone up. And I just got back from a world tour, stopped in New York for that filming. Uh, but then went to Scotland, UK, and Canada. We've got a lot of momentum in these markets. And I could just see the excitement. And mom here's what momentum looks like. When you are so on fire about your product and company, it's kind of like when you first fall in love, you know? Yep. Um, you, you just, when you talk to people, instead of them scratching their head and thinking, oh, well, I don't know, I've got this or I've got that, you know what they're thinking? Oh my gosh, if I don't do this, I'm going to miss out. Mm -hmm. And that's what momentum looks like. And so I came back home and I shared with my team that, you know, my pioneers, some of the people that have been around for a while, and I just shared this with them. And I said, you guys, momentum comes in phases and you just have to decide that you want to get back on momentum and just go and do it. Charge the hill. And uh, one of my leaders back in this did it. She last month she said, Okay, guys, we're going in momentum. We're going first step. We made it car. And she did it. So um, it, it's just a choice. And and momentum, you can feel momentum. It's an energy. There's so much activity. And and then when you're not in momentum, you can feel that too. So you just have to ask yourself right now, is my business in momentum? And if it's not you can decide right now to put it back in momentum. And that's what I love about this business. So a couple things on momentum. So one is if you're not in momentum and you're feeling maybe even neutral or negative momentum, you need to take a look at the calendar, one, to, to, to see if you're going through the behaviors, uh, doing the actions that are necessary to be able to have success. And then two is make the decision. And if you just make the decision and tell the world we're going into momentum and you can you can transfer that belief to people is what you're saying. Right, but I think the step before looking at your calendar is take a look in the mirror. What's going on? Where's your belief? Um, you know, I, I have a beautiful home here in Arizona. I've got a fabulous log cabin on a lake in Wisconsin that I spend my summers. I've got a little resort in Jamaica. I'm building a beautiful home on, on a hillside outside of Negril, the fastest runner in the world from Jamaica. What's his name? Bolt. Yeah. He's, he, he's going to be one of my neighbors, so I can go running with him and see the back of his feet. Um, I, you know, you got to, you know, I could just get really, really comfortable and say, you know, you know, hey, have a nice life. But I am so passionate right now about my business because I know I have a purpose. Hey everybody, this is Eric Worre and welcome to NetworkMarketingPro.com. Last night I couldn't sleep and I, for whatever reason, my mind was racing and I turned on the television and I was watching on HBO there's a show called Taxi Cab Confessions where real taxi drivers have cameras hidden in the taxi and they drive around and they just talk to people that are in the back seat of the car. And one of the gentlemen that got into the back seat of this car uh, was a fire chief in New York City. And um, they, he, he comes in to the, you know, and, and 
they, they get into this discussion, yes, I'm a fire chief, and yes, you know, I've done this, I've done that, and he's, you know, he's kind of proud, right, a little bit, not, but not arrogant, just kind of proud, and slowly, as the taxi driver asks him questions, he starts to open up, and he starts to tell his story. He tells a story of 9-11, and the incredible work and emotion and and drama that surrounded that event as a firefighter in New York in New York he talked about losing his daughter um, and and how traumatic that was of an experience and you know the taxi driver gets emotional and he gets emotional through this process and you kind of think that's the end of the story but the the, the reason why I'm telling you this is at the very end of the show they can't air these taxi cab confessions without permission from the people. So at the end of the show, the taxi drivers, you see you know, each of the stories, they go around to the people and say, hey, you know, I just want you to know this is for a show, and if you're okay with it, you know, signing, would you be willing to sign a release? And the thing that, that this gentleman said in the backseat of the car was, wow, I finally got to tell my story. And the lesson for all of you today is everyone wants to tell their story. Everyone has a story, number one. And everyone has a desire to tell their story, number two. And in that story is hopes and dreams and, and promises of the future and things that they wish for. So when you're talking to prospects, in addition to telling them your story, make sure that you ask some questions and give them the opportunity to tell their story. Just be a friend and ask questions and listen. You will be amazed. Just like this person transformed from this person who's kind of proud to a person who was completely open and vulnerable and a human being with another human being and so grateful for the opportunity to tell his story. So, important leadership lesson, important lesson in building your business, an important lesson in building relationships, especially in this holiday season. So everybody, that's our show for today, and my wish for you is that you decide to become a network marketing professional, you decide to go pro, you decide to be a human being interacting with other human beings, because it is a stone-cold fact that we do have a better way. Now let's go tell the world. Everybody have a great day, and I'll see you. somebody else's story yes. to this audience yes, because and gave the them best, a perfect example. Right, because the best speakers make the fewest words go the farthest. Yeah. So you don't have to tell a story all day. And so I tell people, how many of you know, as you look at yourselves, how many of you know there's no such thing as job security? And I will raise my hand. The reason I'm doing that is that I want them to now make this man's story their story. Mm. So they'll raise their hands. You're right. Good. Here's what happened to them. What they're saying to themselves Either that has happened to me, or I know someone that has happened Especially to me. Especially in today's economy. Right. Now I'm transitioning from there to here's why he became a part of this. Mm -hmm. He wanted to create security for himself. And I'm saying everybody's not going to be rich. That answers what I think. Can I get rich in this? No. People work on jobs for 40 years and, and, and don't get rich. Yet and still they come into this business and they want to get rich in six months. It's not that kind of party. Right. You've got to work. You've got to build a foundation. You've got to learn the products. You've got to learn the marketplace. You've got to develop your personality. You've got to develop your people skills. It takes patience and perseverance and persistence to build this business. But ultimately, as they say, in the beginning, you'll do a lot of things you don't get paid for. But as you continue to grow, you get paid for a lot of things that you don't do. Right. That's the exciting thing about multi-level marketing. It allows you to build something that you can call your own. A lot of people are wishing right now that they had Les Brown in their pocket, they can carry him around when they went and talked to their prospects, and they can look him in the eye and tell him that. Um, talk about how these people can develop their story, or, or, or let them know, because I know yes. that there's a lot of people here, and we have probably 50 different countries around the world that yes. watch this, mm -hmm. and a lot of them aren't aware of you yet. Yes. Um, but they need to be, right? They need yes. to know about your products and services and coaching and all that stuff, and we'll talk about that. Um, your story, your, what what was the defining moment, that turning point for you that set your life on a different course? Well, what set my life on a different course was when my mother became ill. 
mm. because I was a state legislator in Columbus, Ohio. I'm adopted. I was born in a poor section of Miami, Florida called Liberty City, an abandoned building on a floor with a twin brother. I'm telling you my story. And when we were six weeks of age, we were adopted by Mrs. Mamie Brown. I feel like Abraham Lincoln who said, all that I am and all that I ever hoped to be, I owe to my mother. My mother was a domestic worker on Miami Beach. She, she cooked for families. We ate the food left over from the families that she cooked for. We wore the hand-me-down clothes of the children that Mama kept. And so as a child and goal, a turning point in my life was seeing my mother work so hard. I said, Eric, when I become a man, I want to take care of my mother. I want to ask you. Is there someone that you want to take care of? Is there someone that you'd like to do something special for? I want you to think about that person right now. Now, what I've done by doing that, I have segued from my story. I have now brought them into the story, and I asked them, is there someone you want to do something special for? They're saying yes. Now, that is called an imaginative leap. They leap from my story into their own story and say, yes, I know somebody. I like to do something for my coach or for my minister or for my mother or for my father or an aunt that raised me, okay? So now they're in the story. Mm -hmm. Now I will tell them how I went about doing that. So they have an interest. Who are you? What do you have? I have a story on how I brought my mother home and why should I care? The reason you should, should care is that I've been very successful at doing something that you can do too and I'm going to show you how to do it. So now you create a committed listening in the telling of the story. Or I can say, you know, uh, recently I went to a seminar, a young lady by the name of Pauline Ahi, she came to the seminar. Pauline flew from Hawaii to Los Angeles. I was very inspired as I watched her. And the reason I was inspired, here we were in a room of entrepreneurs, and the person standing in front of the room, Dr. Julie Van Putten, as she was speaking and talking about discovering your power voice, Ever so often, Pauline would lean forward, and she'd pick up a pen with her mouth, and she would write with her mouth. Pauline came from Hawaii. Pauline has no arms. Pauline has no legs. She writes with her mouth. Here's a person who decided to become an entrepreneur, who decided to build a business in multi-level marketing, and with no arms and no legs, she's building an organization. And one of the things that, that really got me when Dr. Julie Van Putten interviewed Pauline, she asked her, tell me one major obstacle you had in your life. Tell me something that you can think of. And Pauline looked, and she thought, and she said, I can't think of anything. And that, that grabbed me, because I could have given her a whole lot of things, a list of obstacles. And that showed me that, that Elsie Robinson was right when he said, things may happen around you and things may happen to you, but the only things that really count are the things that happen in you. Even though she was born with no arms and no legs, what has happened in her that she sees herself as an empowered person. She has not decided to become a part of a job, the journey of the broke. She decided to control her own destiny by being involved in multi-level marketing. And what I said as I looked at her, if Pauline can do it, I know I can do it. And I know you can do it. Well, there's a couple of videos from Eric Worre and, and Eric Worre's training, and, and really Eric Worre is, is a very successful entrepreneur, very successful in the network marketing industry, and, and he says that there's, there's four important parts to every story, and I'm just going to, I'm just going to tell you the, the four parts of the story, uh, first being um, basically your background. Give your background, uh, who you are, what you do. And, and then, I guess, um, and I might say in different words than, than what Eric says, but the next part that I say is, is um, you know, why do you want to get away from something or, or uh, some place, and, and, or where do you want to go to, and, uh, and, and what's compelling to make you do that? And I, I really believe uh, it's very important, this part of the, of the story, because it's where you can draw in uh, your audience and um, you can get them to engage. And, and then the third part of the story uh, really being, what's your solution? What's the solution to the problem that you've presented? And then, and then the fourth part of the story is, you know, what's your future? Where do you see your future? Where do you see yourself going? And so uh, what I'd like to do is, we've got a, a, a 
couple of people lined up to give their story. Uh, let's run out to Utah, uh, to Jessica Moffat. Jessica, if you want to unmute yourself, hit star six, unmute yourself, and, and just uh, give us your story. Thank you. Are you ready for me? I am. So, okay. <laughs> I'm a little nervous. <laughs> um, I, I'm not originally from Utah, but we moved here when I was a teenager. And then um, when Mark and I got married, we were introduced to the Sizzle opportunity. And that was back 12 years ago, or however long it's been open. I don't know exact years. About 12 years ago. And uh, we went to a meeting and we saw the opportunity and we understood what they were trying to, you know, tell us with all of the health things that were out there and, and the products and, and how uh, just our normal everyday life uh, food and things just don't cut it. And so we did, we saw a vision for it and, and understood like the vision behind uh, their mission to um, bring health and wealth and happiness to everybody. And so we jumped in and we were uh, greatly affected by the product and, and we saw some incredible results and um, then some things in life happened and we took a pause from it and um, then we got back in just uh, two years ago, and because we understand the importance of the health part of it also, and I wanted to be able to provide my family with things that would help us function every day with our bodies, and I also have a passion to help other people with their health and uh, being able to um, just spread this great um, wealth of knowledge with the products uh, that we have to to help people live a better life, uh, have a happier life and a more active life. I know that just for us personally, Mark Mark's in, works construction also and he, because of the products, he doesn't have any pain that he deals with that he used to. Uh, 12 years ago before we started taking the products um, and so just just in that alone being able to help people um, live a healthier life a life that's going to allow them to do more and then also for my family to be able to do whatever we want without the pain uh, to have our body balanced I personally have been able to uh, get rid of pain from my C-sections that were causing me to, I couldn't even do sit-ups without intense pain. And now I work with a trainer and I do intense working out. <laughs> and so um, really, I mean, our, our focus and my focus especially is to be able to help people live a better life and um, for us to live a better life also. And I think it's going to, it's already proven itself uh, in our life for the better, in better health, and being able to, when things come up and life just happens, being able to have an income that comes in, uh, even though I had to take a break <laughs> because just of life circumstances that comes up. And so that's another really powerful aspect of network marketing and being in that kind of a business, being able to when those life experiences and life circumstances come up and you just have to step back for a little bit because you've got to focus somewhere else, that income still comes in while you're helping people. <laughs> right. Well, and, and thanks for sharing with us, Jessica. And, you know, um, I really think that, that you've got a, a lot of, a lot of things that, that are positive about, about what you're doing. You know, one thing, and, and, and hopefully um, you don't mind that I give you a little constructive criticism on, on telling your story. Um, you know, I think, you know, from knowing you, 
and knowing a little bit about you, some of the things that, that you really want to try and, and share and emphasize is that, you know, like with, with your background, um, you know, you're, you're married, you've, you've got uh, young children, and you're trying to balance you know, a career, you're, you're, you and your husband are self-employed, and, uh, and being self-employed, it really means it's giving, you, it's giving you the right to have a job, you work for yourself, but like I found out, you tend to put more time into it than, um, than, uh, than um, um, if you had a job job, if you were working for somebody else. And the nice thing about right. being in Sizzle, if you, if you present that as the problem, you present it that, you know, you're actually putting in more time than if you had a, a job, right? And you get people to agree with you on that and you get them to say that, oh, yeah, I had that happen with me too. I, I, I mean, I, 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 I wasn't able to attend this function or I wasn't able to do that. I wasn't able to go here because I was too busy working. Right. And I really think emphasize that part because, you know, then you can ask people that, 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 that um, um, you can say, Jessica, have you ever had that happen to you where you had to miss something because you were just too busy? And chances yep. are most, <laughs> most, everybody, most everybody's going to agree with you. And then, when, then what you do is then you present the solution. And the solution was, I don't know if you'd be interested, but I found something. It's a, it's a company by the name of Sizzle. And, and then you can tell that part of your story. But I really don't think that you're going to have the effect of your story. You, I mean, you're jumping into part three before you've ever done part, before you've done part two. You skipped over the part two part. Gotcha. You following me? Yep. And 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 then and then now you present the solution, and then you you then you say, and in the future, I'm going to be in a position where I'll never miss my kids' events. When my kids get older and they have their own kids, I'm never going to miss any of my grandkids' events ever, ever. And you see how that's going to make your more your story more engaging, more 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 powerful because now you can draw people in emotionally because they're going to connect with you. I mean, if you had told me that story and you had you had said it that way, you would have had me agreeing with me. I would have been, I would have been nodding my head with you um, from part two all the way through the end of your story because that's that's exactly what happened to me. Gotcha. Cool. That is awesome because that's probably the thing I struggle with the most is my story <laughs> you bet so well thank you Jessica I really appreciate that let's uh let's run over to uh, Michigan and Jane were you able to jump on and join us tonight star six Jane or Jim Dufty Okay, um, well, they might not have been able to get on, and, and that's the whole thing with this. You know, we're kind of in, in a volunteer army, and uh, we never know. So let's go down to, uh, is that Jim? Yep, that's Jim and Jane. Hey, Jim and Jane. Um, I mean, let's, let, would you mind sharing your story and, and kind of, I mean, um, let, let us know why you got involved with Sizzle and kind of where you're going with it, you know, following kind of that whole idea of the, the four parts of the story? I'll let Jane go first because she, she started it and I was just following along. Um, we've been married 32 <coughs> years and um, Jim, um, let's see, how do I want to start this? He was, um, I was looking because his health was going down. And so, so anyways, um, I seen Andrea's, you know, um, stuff on Facebook and I, I knew we had to do something different because Jim, um, every time he went to the doctors, he would come back with more medicine and he was getting worse. So that I was seriously looking. And so um, we've been in this nine months now. And um, so we have seen results. Uh, Jim has um, completely turned around. He has got so many, so many jobs right now. He would never have been able to keep up this um, process or his workload that he is doing right now if he was like he was nine months ago. So he's got more energy and um, so, and we're now, we just want to help people 
um, get the results that we're getting. Got anything else there, Jim? Yep. Uh, I'm 77 years old. Well, I'm not quite, but a couple of days. 77 years old, born and raised on a farm. I'm an architect. Uh, and like Jane said, in 216, basically I didn't have any energy and she did most of the shoveling of the snow. And I, my health kept failing. And like she said, I went to the doctor and there's, more, of course, more medicine. One for this, and then they have to balance it out with another one. So we got on we got on the Sissel products, and basically my health has turned around. I had neuropathy in my legs, and my were numb, and my feet were numb, and I started to walk like a drunk here a while ago. Uh, so that's all gone away. And I about 20 years ago I injured my shoulder, and I couldn't raise my hand above my head. Uh, and I noticed, oh, it was probably a month ago that I could raise my hand and, and I ha helped my daughters do some build outs on their condo so I didn't have to have two hands to operate the power drill. Uh, and my health is a lot better, more energy. Like uh, Jane said, I'm an architect and I got about seven jobs going, most I've ever had in my life at once. I'm self and self employed, I work out of the lower level but I'm keeping up with all my jobs. And let's see what else. Anyway, anyway, I got a lot more energy because uh, because of these products we're taking, age pill, and, uh, triangle of life, and a couple other ones, but we're doing fine. And we are just talking about here a little while ago that on this auto ship, we're going to add uh, six age pills bottles of age pills because we use about four a month and we're going to uh, some of the people we know can't afford an age pill because of the of the price so we're going to take two bottles and donate those to people we think that need them Is there anything else jane probably missed a lot of stuff but and i'm a hairdresser for um 42 years and um I had skin problems and uh, thought I could do it with my health or my eating, but I didn't. I got some results, but I didn't get the results that I'm seeing with Sissel products. So it's changed my life too, as far as my skin. So that's it, I guess. Um, we just want to help people get the results we're getting and help them build a business. Yeah, we first. She first started out looking for something to help her. And then once we got into it for since November, uh, one of our things is to help other people. Yeah. Anything else, Kurt, we could help you with? Okay, I think Kurt's actually just dropped out. He just messaged me and said his mobile reception's dropped out. Oh. <laughs> okay. So um, I, do, I guess I just wanted to share, so you both did an awesome job sharing your stories. Thank you very much. Uh, You're welcome. It was great. Thank you for jumping on today. Um, I guess coming back to the four parts of sharing your story, um, they, it suggested that you really highlight part two, which is what you did in life and what you want to change, which both of you, both of you did that. And I guess that is the most important part that people relate to. And that if people spend too much time talking about the solution and their future and stuff like that, that it can, that can people can get turned off. So really honing in on that bit. And you had mentioned, I heard uh, t talking about the skin and the changes and you're getting results now. Um, mm -hmm. So that was awesome. That was, uh, was that you, Terry, doing it or Jane? Sorry, I'm getting the names mixed up. Jane. Jane. Yeah, sorry, Jane. Yeah, so I heard you talking about your skin and your changes and that. So that's really what you didn't like and what you'd like to change. So that's awesome. Uh, so just, uh, I think I'm just losing the screen. I'm trying to do multiple things at once. So just bear with me. I didn't expect Kurt to drop out. So actually, Trev, I'm just going to go over to you. Yep. Hi, hi Katie. Hi, how are you? Great, thank you. Um, really loved... Um, uh, the common theme here is that we just everyone's getting to such great results with these sizzle products, aren't we? And we tend to like, like jump straight into the products, and you know, and we love that. And I can understand why too. But anyway, I, I guess I'll get 
Whip uh, and Kurt's probably, I hope he's not, well, he's not listening. But anyway, uh, we've been playing around with this for a little bit, haven't we, Katie? And um, learning about Eric Worry. And I find myself, you know, I try and um, get people to um, take a look at Sizzle and, we, and, and like 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 everyone, we because we get such wonderful results with these products, we try to jump straight into a solution, which is the third part of, a, of sharing a story. And um, the solution is those fantastic products, as we know, but I guess that when we do that, if it, people feel as though you're trying to sell to them, I suppose. But anyway, we've been playing around with this Eric Worry stuff and... I guess I'll, I'll go into, um, you know, my background and, you know, the first part, the second part, the third and fourth. So I just sort of threw this together the other night and we, we did a bit of a training on this and it worked out quite nice actually. And anyway, I'll just go into it. So I fell into the trade of Boilermaker Wilder with no good reason why. Why? And a mate of mine said, Trip, come down here. Um, you'll get a job, no worries. And I did. Now, I suppose you could call that word of mouth marketing, I suppose, but it makes me laugh when I think back about it now. You know, my work, it's, it's, it's a really, really hot work and, you, you know, I get to wear bloody heavy overalls even on those really hot days and, you know, I, I really sweat a lot in my work and you make the money but, but you really earn it. So most of the old blokes in my trade, they look really old and, most of them really die young, you know, and uh, and I actually stumbled upon um, Tom's former company, New Ways, many, many years ago, and he had an excellent product and, and just so happened to be um, a network marketing company. And uh, I could really see a future and a possibility and, um, a ch and, a, and a chance to create leveraged income, which I thought was awesome. So it was network marketing, of course, and, it, and, and I slowly transformed because of network marketing, really. It's really changed me as a person. And really, self-development's been great. So for me, the future looks really bright. Okay, awesome. Thank, thanks, Trev. So I'm going to come back to you in a second. I'm just going to run over. I'm going to come back in a second. So I'm just going to run over to Sandy. Um, if you're on the line, Sandy, if you can share your story. Hi, Katie. Can you hear me? Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Okay, so how I start my story off, depending on if it's cold market or warm market really, is um, I'd say, hi, my name's Sandy Biltoft. I've been in the hairdressing industry for over 30 years now. My husband and I actually bought a franchise hair and beauty business a little while ago now. And one week after being into that business, our son became very, very ill. Um, and it wasn't until I really realised how sick he was that the business we were in wasn't the business I wanted to be in because of all the hairdressing, the chemicals and the toxins that were in the products. Um, so after being in that business for six years, our son struggled for three years in and out of hospital the whole time we had that business and had had 17 brain surgeries um, and he was still in a lot of pain and no doctors could help us with him. In the end, they just said, sorry, there's nothing more we can do. So at that stage, I'd, my husband and I decided we did not want to be in this franchise business. So we got out of that business. And then in the meantime, we got shown a miracle from a hairdresser, um, which was Tom Mao's former company and now Sizzle International. So within three weeks of our son, um, being on the products, we had amazing results from their quality nutritional products. So now I feel so much better knowing we can help other people and change their lives for the better. Thanks, Katie. That's excellent. Thank you, Sandy. Great. So, Trev, I'm just going to run back to you. So for, for those of you on the call today, really just want to demonstrate uh, what happens when somebody shares their story but they only share part three and four as opposed to also sharing part one and two. So for those of you, you who are listening uh, via the telephone, you probably won't be able to see the slide or you obviously won't be able to see the slide. So uh, part one is your background, part two is what you didn't like and what you want to change. So that often can be a point of pain for people. And um, so when it's a point of pain for people, uh, Others can often relate to that part the most, actually. And if they can relate to that, that's when they connect and build rapport. So that actually is really the most important part. Part three is the solution, and part four is how you feel about the future. 
So if you share part three and four, just jump into the solution in your future, it's, it comes across uh, quite differently. So Trev, if you want to just demonstrate to people listening on the call, uh, if you were to just start talking to someone about part three being the solution and part four, the, your future. Alrighty. Okay, part three. Okay, I stumbled upon a an excellent product. Um, it just so happens to be a network marketing company's product. Uh, it's, um, a, it's a real chance to create leveraged income. Uh, it's really transforming uh, network marketing and um, it's t totally changed me as a person. Um, and your self-development's great and the future looks really bright. Yeah, great. So I guess that, we, uh, and, I, and you can hear it, I'm sure you can, Trev, yourself, hear that you, when you're sharing the part three and four, it comes across as like a sales pitch? Yeah, yeah, it does. You know, And I've found that now that we're learning this kind of stuff about you know, talking about myself as, as who I am or who I was, <laughs> you know, and what I do for a living, you know, I, I tend to, um, people can relate to that. Yeah. And I guess um, it brings them into a point like Eric was saying in those videos that um, you actually open them up a bit more and um, they actually listen a little bit more when you start talking about, you know, what you come across with Sizzle and then how, how it's really helped, you know, and, um, and how it actually can be really beneficial from a, a business point of view, I suppose. Absolutely. And so I also got out of that trend that it would probably be even more important just to share your background and what you didn't like, what you want to change, because that would lead into further conversation mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, eventually lead to sizzle. So, and that's where you build the rapport with someone. And I guess for me too, I've been, if I speak to someone, often I feel apprehensive to share my story or my background to go into any detail about, you know, my dad or anything like that and what, actually started my interest because uh, I don't know I feel actually I felt a bit embarrassed about it or just I don't know I guess shy about it but it's that part that actually you know that building that rapport and building connection with people by showing some vulnerability and opening up that then brings you closer to someone and and so I found that really powerful too yeah yeah great did you want to add anything else yeah, and it's like, you know, you're building friendships with people and, and I really love that about this business, you know, and, uh, you know, and to build a, a, a relationship and to become business partners in the, in, you know, when that, when that progresses and gets to that point, it's something that's sort of there forever. So, you know, I really, I really love that aspect of this business, Katie. Yeah, fantastic. And I guess, and, and you've found, Trev, because you've, you've jumped on the call, a previous call of ours and shared it now a second time. How many times would you suggest to people listening that they need to practice their story? I guess, um, yeah, you just need to practice it and you tweak it as you go, you know, and it will change things that this, it will change ever so slightly in different situations, I guess. So, yeah, practice makes perfect, Katie. Yeah. So great. Anyway, I think we'll, we've gone a bit over time there and Kurt, um, unfortunately, his reception dropped out. So I want to thank everyone for uh, taking the time out of your evening or morning and joining us on the call. I hope you found it valuable and I hope that you have a great weekend and we'll end the call there. And thanks for joining us.